Hello everyone, this is R.S. Miller at the endtimenews.org and today is August 11th, 2013. Over the last several days, reports have been coming out about renewed concerns over the Fukushima disaster which took place in March of 2011. Although at the time, officials had acknowledged that there was a certain element of danger due to the meltdown and explosions of several of the nuclear reactors on the site, but for the most part, it was made to seem not as bad as it actually is. The fact of the matter is that the Fukushima Daiichi disaster is far worse than anyone cared to imagine. Professor Christopher Busby on August 9, 2013 said, Fukushima is a nightmare disaster area and no one has the slightest idea what to do. The game is to prevent the crippled nuclear plant from turning into an open-air super reactor spectacular which would result in a hazardous melted catastrophe. On April 25, 2011, one month after the explosions at the Fukushima nuclear plant and the anniversary of Chernobyl, I was interviewed by RT and asked to compare Chernobyl and Fukushima, he said. The clip which you can find on YouTube was entitled, Can't Seal Fukushima Like Chernobyl. It all goes into the sea. Since then, huge amounts of radioactivity have flowed from the wrecked reactors directly into the Pacific Ocean. Attempts to stop the flow of contaminated water from Fukushima into the sea were always unlikely to succeed. It is like trying to push water uphill. Now they all seem to have woken up to the issue and have begun to panic. RT recently stated in a report, that the contaminated groundwater accumulating under the crippled Fukushima nuclear power plant had risen to 60 centimeters above the protective barrier and is now freely leaking into the Pacific Ocean, the plant's operator at TEPCO had admitted. The Tokyo Electric Power Company, which is responsible for decommissioning the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant on Saturday said, the protective barriers that were installed to prevent the flow of toxic water into the ocean are no longer coping with the ground level, groundwater levels. The contaminated groundwater mixes with the radioactive leaks seeping out of the plant, which is already crossing the barriers and into the Pacific Ocean. Japanese officials have admitted that approximately 300 tons of radioactive water has been leaking into the Pacific Ocean at Fukushima for the past two years and is worse than earlier thought. Engineers at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant are struggling to stop hundreds of tons of radioactive groundwater from seeping into the Pacific Ocean every day. Crews have started pumping some of the water from the ground as a temporary measure to contain the leak. Government officials say about 1,000 tons of groundwater could be flowing from a hillside into the soil below the plant every day. Of that, about 300 tons filters through a contaminated area and is laced with radioactive substances. Then it seeps into the sea. Another 300 tons bypasses the contaminated area. The remaining 400 tons of water is leaking into the basements of the buildings housing reactors 1 to 4. That water is also contaminated, and it's being pumped out and stored. The crews at the plant have been injecting soil-hardening chemicals into the ground on part of the site to stop the water leaking into the ocean. But there are concerns this effort may be pushing water levels higher above the barrier. TEPCO workers are trying to counter this effect by pumping out some of the water from a new well. They are also planning to sink about 30 5-meter long pipes into the ground. Workers will use the pipes to pump out groundwater starting next week. They hope to drain 100 tons per day. Long term, they are considering freezing the soil beneath the buildings. Crews would bury pipes and inside them circulate coolant kept at minus 40 degrees Celsius. The frozen soil would act as a dam to prevent groundwater from reaching the contaminated area. But it could take one to two years to complete the project. 
and maintaining the cooling operations will be extremely costly. The map pictured here is dated for April 2013. If this is an accurate representation, then the entire Pacific Ocean has been affected by varying degrees of radioactive contamination leaking from Fukushima. On August 9th, ENE News published a statement by Paul Gunter, director of the Reactor Oversight Project at Beyond Nuclear. He said, We are seeing a full range of radioactive contaminants now moving, which indicate that the damaged cores of these reactors, the meltdowns themselves, are now contributing to the contamination in the Pacific Ocean and groundwater. Right now we are seeing the Japanese government is in chaos. The fact that the revelation of this ex extensive contamination is coming now, more than two years after the accident occurred, indicates that it's completely out of control. About a year or so ago, Helen Caldicott, an Australian physician, author, anti-nuclear advocate who has founded several associations dedicated to opposing the use of nuclear power, presents her views on the dangers we face from the Fukushima and Chernobyl disasters. First I want to present this. It's, present, it's produced by the New York Academy of Sciences um, and it's a report on Chernobyl. can be downloaded. Yeah. Uh, they translated 5,000 articles from Russian the first time into English. It seems that nearly a million people have already died as a result of Chernobyl, despite what WHO says and the IAEA. This is one of the most monstrous covers up, cover ups in the history of medicine, because everybody should know about this. Then we extrapolate through to Japan. Um, Japan is, by orders of magnitude, many times worse than Chernobyl. Never in my life did I think that six nuclear reactors would be at risk. I knew the three GE engineers who helped design these Mark I GE reactors. Uh, they resigned because they knew they were dangerous. So Japan built them on an earthquake fault. In each reactor core is as much long-lived radiation as that produced by a thousand Hiroshima-sized bombs. We are dealing with diabolical energy. E equals mc squared. It's the energy that blows up nuclear bombs. Einstein said, nuclear power is a hell of a way to boil water because that is all nuclear power is used for to boil water through the massive heat, turn it into steam, turn a turbine which generates electricity. Now when you fish in uranium, 200 new elements are formed, all of which are much more poisonous to the body than the original uranium. Although uranium is pretty poisonous, America used it in Fallujah and Baghdad and in Fallujah, 80% of the babies being born are grossly deformed. They're being born without brains, single eyes, no arms. The doctors have told the women to stop having babies. The incidence of childhood cancer has gone up about 12 times. This is genocide. It's a nuclear war being conducted in Iraq. But uranium that they're using lasts for more than 4.5 billion years. So we're contaminating the cradle of civilization. In the nuclear power plants, however, is a huge amount of radiation, 200 elements. Some last seconds, some last millions of years. Radioactive iodine lasts six weeks. It causes thyroid cancer. That's why people are saying, better take potassium iodide, because that blocks the thyroid uptake of radioactive iodine, which later can cause thyroid cancer. In Chernobyl, over 20,000 people have developed thyroid cancer have their thyroids out and they will die unless they take thyroid replacement every day like a diabetic has to take insulin. Strontium-90 will get out, it lasts for 600 years, it goes to the bone where it causes bone cancer or leukemia. 
Cesium lasts for 600 years. It's all over Europe. 40% of Europe is still radioactive. Turkish food is extremely radioactive. Do not buy Turkish dried apricots. Do not buy Turkish hazelnuts or dried... Uh, the Turks were so cross with the Russians, they sent all their radioactive tea over to Russia after Chernobyl. But 40% of Europe is still radioactive. Farms in Britain, their lands are so full of cesium they can't sell them. Don't eat European food. But that's nothing compared to what's happening now. One of the most deadly is plutonium, named after Pluto, god of the underworld. One millionth of a gram, if you inhale it, will give you cancer. Hypothetically, one pound, if evenly distributed, could give everyone on Earth cancer. Each reactor has 250 kilos of plutonium in it. Kilogram. Plutonium is going to get out and spread all over the Northern Hemisphere, and it's already heading towards North America now, plus radioactive iodine 129, its half-life is 17 million years, plus strontium, plus cesium, plus tritium, and I could go on and on and on. When it rains, down comes fallout, and it concentrates in food. If it gets into the sea, the algae concentrated hundreds of times, then the crustaceans concentrated hundreds of times, then the little fish, then the big fish, then us. Because we stand on the apex of the food chain. You can't taste these radioactive elements, you can't see them, and you can't smell them. They're silent. When you get them inside your body, you don't suddenly drop dead of cancer. It takes five to 60 years to get your cancer. And when the cancer, if you feel a lump in your breast, doesn't say, I was made by some strontium 90 U8 and a piece of fish 20 years ago. All radiation is damaging. It's cumulative. Each dose you get adds to your risk of getting cancer. With americium, that's more dangerous than plutonium. I mean, I could go on and on. Depends if it rains, if you're going to get it or not. Um, if it rains and the radiation comes down, don't grow food, don't eat the food, and I mean don't eat it for 600 years. The radioactive waste from nuclear power is going to be buried, I, I hear, just like next to Lake Ontario. It's going to leak, last for millions of years, it's going to get into the water, into the food chains. Radioactive waste will induce epidemics of cancer, leukemia, and genetic disease for the rest of time. This is the greatest public health hazard the world has ever witnessed, apart from the threat every day. Einstein of said the splitting of the atom changed everything save man's mode of thinking. Very profound. Thus, we drift towards unparalleled catastrophe. We are arrogant, we have a lot of hubris. And I think the reptilian midbrain of some men's brains is pathological. We are now in a situation where we have harnessed the energy of the sun. It is totally out of control and there's simply nothing we can do about it. Friends, here in America, we have our own nuclear reactors scattered about the country, as can be seen in this map from Greenpeace. It seems to me that considering the Earth's crust is becoming more unstable, which is evidenced by the increase in earthquake activity, massive landslides, and even unexplained sinkholes, it's only a matter of time before another nuclear disaster adds to the ongoing catastrophe of Fukushima and Chernobyl. Whether it takes place here in the U.S. or elsewhere, the chain reaction effect will irrevocably alter life on this planet, and that is if life is able to continue at all. In Luke chapter 21 verse 25, Jesus states, and there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, 
for the powers of heaven will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. We are indeed living in the last days. Just in the past year, we have had multiple near-miss asteroids, with one of them coming so close to the Earth that it was nearly in the path of orbiting satellites. There has been the unusual phenomena of tornadoes on the sun, unusual and strange observations in the heavens, and even strange unidentified noises being reported around the world. The weather is, is going haywire, record-breaking heat in one part of a country, while at the same time another part receiving snow. And don't even mention the three feet of hail that fell in Texas not long ago, or the ice tsunami that crept up on the land and destroyed a dozen homes in Minnesota just this year. You can call it what you will, but it's certainly not normal. Then when we have earthquakes increasing in frequency and intensity, wars and rumors of wars, we have mass animal die-offs, tens of thousands or even millions of various creatures mysteriously dying at the same time, these events are happening all too frequently and in sufficiently large enough numbers as to not be considered a normal part of life. Several dead fish is perfectly normal, not a million. The destruction of the planet is happening right before our eyes, and there is no doubt in my mind that it is a major cause of concern for world leaders, part of the biblical meaning of the distress of nations with perplexity in Luke 21. As hard as mankind tries to solve the problems that plague our civilization, when it's all said and done, it will end up being a futile endeavor. Bible prophecy will be fulfilled, and only God himself can fix what ails the world. But unfortunately, there are far too many people who appear to be blind to spiritual matters and the truths of the Bible. All roads do not lead to heaven. Salvation comes through the only begotten Son of God, Jesus Christ. And without salvation, there is no hope. Are you saved? If you have a desire to receive salvation and be assured of where your eternal destination lies, then follow the link in the box below and pray the prayer with all sincerity, with all of your heart, and you will be saved. May God bless you.